before I make the bead, we're going to go over to the whiteboard here and I'm going to draw it out. So we're going to be making a vessel shape today. So the bead is going to be like this. Before that, I'll be making all the component parts, all the decorations. So when I do that, I'm going to... Well, what I've been showing you so far is we've been feathering it. So now we're going to feather out to make a more pointed petal. So the direction that we're going to be going is out. And it's going to be a five petal flower like we've been doing. So that's going to be around the bead. And then we'll be putting the center. before we can make the bead. My beads are very um, component heavy, so we've got to make all our component parts first. So the first cane I'm going to show you how to make is a leaf cane. So what I've showed you so far has been, first we started off with the white, then we did the yellow. Now I'm going to do a combination of the two. So we're going to do, um, we'll do green rather than white, but I'm going to add the yellow in there as well. So rather than wrapping it like I've been doing it, we're going to be doing swiping. That's going to give me less glass. And remember, I'm just doing just the, you know, the two and a half inch, or the one inch, two and a half centimeters on the end of that. You don't want to do more than that, because then when you pull it out, you leave a lot of it on the ends. So now I'm coming in with the dark emerald green. The emerald green is going to go on the Nile green part of it. And then next I'll do cobalt, and the cobalt is going to go on the yellow. So I'm going to get it hot, touch the end, swipe it down. So when I'm heating the end of this rod, I want to heat enough so I can swipe the entire length that I've laid out here. If you heat too much, you'll have a big ball at the end. If you don't heat enough, you'll get kind of stuck in the middle. So it's important to uh, heat up the right amount. So it's just that ball right on the end there. So now this is the cobalt. And I'm going to swipe the cobalt over the yellow. And that gives me that really beautiful olivey green color. When I first started making cane work, I did just straight color and then discovered I wanted to have more movement and um, texture to my work, and so that's when I started adding all the different stripes of color. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this rod here, because it's opaque. I always like to pull with a transparent. So I'm going to punty up this transparent green. It doesn't matter what color it is, as long as it's transparent. So before I do that, I'm actually going to add a couple stripes of black, and this is going to give me even more texture and line to it. So I'm going to heat it up, and this is just randomly laid across 
the cane. So I want to heat the tip, touch it down, and lay it across. So I want you guys to pay attention how I'm doing that. So I don't go in like this. I'm actually laying it across. Don't pull it, or that cane will have a tendency to ball up. So I'm heating the tip, touch it down, lay it across. Some of the canes I'm more precise about. This one, you want it to be a little more organic, so I'm not counting the stripes. I'm just putting it across just to give me more texture and color. I'm going to turn up my flame just a little bit. I'm working right in the center of the flame, the hottest part. So I'm punching this up. We're going to get it nice and hot and pull it out. Yes, I do that because the opaque rods are a lot softer than the um, transparents, and so otherwise what will happen is if I penny up with an opaque rod, then when I go to pull this out, I'll be pulling the stringer on the ends, and so I want to make sure that I'm pulling all my color and not my ends. And some people like to punty up with metal chopsticks or metal rods, and that's fine too. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. I want this really hot. The reason why I want it to droop and I want it hot like that is because I want it to be nice and smooth. If I didn't do that, if I skipped that part, then what would happen is my cane would be lumpy. It would be thick in some areas and thin in others, and I don't want that. I want it to be a nice, smooth cane. So I'm going to cut this right in the middle. And then I always like to cut off my ends right into a bowl or a jar of water. OK, so there's our first component. We're going to set that over here. So now we're going to make, this is going to be like a little wildfire that's a flower that is white. So rather than use clear, I'm going to use this tinted color. This is the risotto or the lavender pink color. It's just going to give me a nice little tint rather than being just a flat, clear. So again, I'm heating just the tip, just what I want to pull. And I'm swiping that down that white rod. So I want to get it hot touch it down, and swipe it a, down that rod. Does it matter whether you swipe up or down the rod? I like to swipe down. Yes, it does, because if you go the opposite way, what's going to happen is you're going to get stuck. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm swiping that transparent glass down, using the flame as a cutting tool. It's right there. It's easy for me to cut that off. Whereas if I went that direction, you can do it, but it's a lot more awkward. This is more comfortable. I also like to wrap if I want more color, but this one, I just, I just want a little bit on there, just enough to coat that rod. So that's why I'm swiping rather than wrapping. I do both. So I want to make sure that white is completely encased. Then I'm going to punty this up and get rid of that white. I prefer tile nippers. You can also use, um, uh, you can burn it off if you want, but tile nippers I think are cleaner. So I'm going to get this hot. And then we're going to marver it out. So it's going to get really floppy. And so you notice if I stay like this, what's going to happen is I'm going to be chasing it the whole time. But watch, if I tuck my hand down like that, the bundle is going to kind of shrink down and it's going to make it a lot easier for me to control. So that is an important thing. The nice thing about these parts is they're pretty forgiving. Because they're going to be 
pulled down so small. I don't want you guys to be concerned if you don't get your lines perfectly straight on there. It's going to be pulled down so teeny, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to get this hot, lay it across. So this is the same process that I just showed you. Now because this white is so soft, I'm actually going to give pretty decent sized spaces. I don't want it to be too close because otherwise it'll just cover up all of the clear. So you want to heat the tip, touch it down, lay it across your piece. So I'm gently lifting it into the flame. So my piece is behind the flame. And I'm gently lifting it into the flame and burning it off. Another thing I want you guys to notice is once I do a couple, I spin it around and make sure I heat the back side of that bundle. Otherwise, what can happen is these can all start flying off and that can be really frustrating. Here's the last one. So pick up any rod that is transparent and go ahead and attach it to the end. And again, at this point, I'm going to turn up my flame. I like a nice hot flame for doing this. And you can do it in a cooler flame. It just takes longer. So I'm slowing down. Slower is better. If I'm whipping around in the flame like that, it's just going to take me longer to achieve what I want. And that's a nice hot gather of glass. So I'm just slowing down. I'm right in the hottest part of the flame. I'm holding it there. I'm supporting that glass. I'm not pushing and I'm not pulling. I'm just supporting it there and allowing it to get hot enough so I can pull a nice even cane. As soon as it gets hot, I increase my speed. Come out of the flame. I'm waiting. If I pulled it now, I'd be in my lap. You don't want that to happen, so you want to wait just a bit. You do want it nice and soft, but you don't want it so soft that it's in your lap. Slow, gentle pull. Wait just for a moment. And then you want to go over your flame and then cut it off. cut off your ends. So there's just one more part to make. And this is going to be for the little berries. So on my interior this time, what I'm going to use is a periwinkle. And because I want this to be multicolored, what I'm going to do is come in with two different colors. So rather than just a flat color, I'm going to come in with the Rubino, which is the ruby pink, and the dark amethyst. So I'm going to alternate between the two colors. And you don't want to trap a lot of air, so you want hot glass touching hot glass. So I'm going to make sure that I heat, heat the tip and then heat along that whole section that I'm laying down. So I'm just alternating between the two colors. With Rubino, it's really essential that you're not low in the flame. The gases aren't fully combined. This is a surface mix torch, and you don't want to be working in the lower third of the flame, or you're going to get all kinds of reduction on that Rubino especially, but it's, it makes all of the glass not look as nice. So I'm heating that whole amount that I'm laying down 
especially heating the tip and then following it down. Get it hot, touch it down, drag it across. If I wanted um, the color not to be so deep and saturated, I'd be swiping more, but I want this be, to be more of an intense color, and that's why I'm actually laying the whole rod amount down rather than swiping. So I like to experiment a lot with color. My general rule is that I want to use a dark, transparent over a light opaque. And that's how I create a lot of my different cane colors, or all of them that way, actually. So I'm going to punty this up. We'll get rid of the periwinkle, and then we'll pull it out. So I want to get that tip hot. Wait just for a minute. See how it's a little soft right now? That's why I'm giving it just a second. Then I'll flip it around, nip off the opaque color, and then come back in with the transparent. So I discovered pretty quickly that I didn't like mixing the glass. I like overlaying colors to get new colors. So you'll see in a lot of my work that that's what I do, I'm to create more depth in the petals and the leaves. I very rarely will use just a straight color right off the rod. It's almost always encased in a transparent. So I'm right in the hottest part of the flame, slowing down letting that gather get nice and hot. As soon as it gets hot enough, then I'm going to increase my speed. And I kind of wiggle it too. It kind of helps the heat get to the center of this bundle. So you notice now I'm increasing my speed a bit. The, heat, the center of this bundle is always going to get plenty of heat, so that's why I'm pretty much focusing on the sides. As soon as it gets nice and floppy, I want to come out of the flame. I'm going to wait. And it's a slow, gentle pull. I'm not going to pull this one as fast, because this is going to be for little berries, so I don't want it to be super skinny, so I'm taking my time. And look at that color, isn't that beautiful? It makes a really nice, vibrant berry color. Wait just for a moment over the flame. I use Rubino in everything, those of you who know me well. When I buy Rubino glass, I buy it five pounds at a time. I never, I don't want to run out. <laughs> okay, so now we're ready to make the bead. Okay, so we're going to be putting palladium and gold on this bead. I want to talk about it just briefly before we go to it. We worked with palladium the other day, so you guys know how that works. We want to keep it in the book. Um, you can touch it with your fingers, but we're not going to do that because if, if there's dampness, it would stick to your hands. Gold, you definitely don't want to touch it with your fingers. It'll become part of you the gold leaf. The kind that I like to use is a, the extra heavy gold leaf. They don't pound it quite as thin. It's the triple X is what they call it, or super heavy gold leaf. I keep them in the books. I do this at home. When you guys are making this bead, you're going to have it. I'm going to come around, or Susan will come around, and we're going to hand it to you. But I'm going to show you how I do it at home in my studio. This is dark amethyst. So this is going to be a, a long bead like I like to make. I want to make sure that my bead release is completely free of moisture. So I'm going to make sure that I'm giving it a nice heat. When you guys are working too, sometimes 
the beetle get larger than you expect, so I want to make sure that you guys heat the whole thing or almost all of it, because then if you accidentally do a little over wrapping, you're not going to be worried about the bead ripping off the mandrel. So it's it's I'm just it's better to be safe than sorry. So I want to make sure you get a nice heat on that whole thing. Now I'll slowly when I see a nice glow on my mandrel, then I know I'm ready to start. I'm heating up the tip of that rod. So when I make my beads, I like to do a double wrap on the end, and that's just going to give me that extra glass that I need to make sure I've got a nice uh, end. So I'll go a couple times around, and then I'll start winding up that mandrel. Now there's a lot of different ways to make beads. Um, there's not a right way or a wrong way. I think it's just whatever you're comfortable doing. A lot of people like to do a large gather of glass and wrap it around that way or make a disc and marver it down. Um, this is the winded method. This is what, how I learned. And so this is what I'm comfortable doing. So this is how I make my beads. And you'll notice how I'm kind of bouncing around in the flame. I don't even think about that anymore, but um, it ensures that my bead's not going to crack at the end. And you guys will notice too, when I decorate my beads, I'll do a little bit of decoration, heat up the whole bead, a little bit of decoration, heat up the whole bead, because otherwise what can happen is all those decorations can start flying off. So in order to avoid that from happening, it's important that you think of the health and well-being of the bead the whole time. Okay, so I'm ending right about here. So I'm gonna stop and do that extra double wrap at the end as well. Slowly pull that away. I'm gonna increase my heat just a bit. So because um, I was working on the opposite side of that bead, I wanna start where um, start marveling where I began. And that's because I just don't want to lose too much heat and have that be the risk of it breaking. So I think it's really important to have a, a nice footprint or base to start. So you, if you have a nice bead to start with, then you can go on with the decorations. You don't want to be too haphazard or sloppy with your base bead because then you could have a beautifully decorated bead but if the, the bead itself is not well made then um, that could detract from the beauty of your bead so I think it's important to have a nice bead to begin with. So once I have my base now I can start to add more glass. So because my ends are set, I don't need to go to the end unless I was making a tube-shaped bead, but because I'm gonna be making a vessel-shaped bead, I don't need to go all the way to the end. So when I apply my glass, I actually do slight little turns to the left. Some people will rock back and forth. Some people just stay static. Um, what I, the reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that the rod is heated all the way around, and that this just helps it go faster. The fun part for me in making beads is the decorating, so the faster I can get there, the better. I mean, the longest part of making a bead is this part, as far as I'm concerned. It's the shaping and the adding the glass, but anything that's going to get me there a little bit faster, I'm all for. So again, I'm moving, or even though I want to be adding on the glass, the reason why I'm moving around a bit is because I don't want that top to crack either, right? So you're always thinking about the whole bead. When I get to this point about here, I'm going to actually slow down. I can always come back and add more glass, but if I can get it at this point, it's going to help me. So I'm slowing down and really piling the glass on because that's just going to help me get that thicker shape 
that I want on this vessel. I also think that it's uh, nice to create the shape that you want before you get there. So you can do it. You can always do it with your paddle. But if I can do it with the glass, it's going to make it that much easier when I go to marver this if I've already got the glass laid down where I want it to be. So. so I'm increasing my speed just a little bit, pulling a little bit harder thinning out that glass a little bit because I want it to be a little narrower at the top. And again, I'm bouncing down to the bottom just to ensure that my bead doesn't get too cold. Pulling it a little quicker at the end, and then gently tapering off. Turning up my flame again. Okay, I'm going to slow down, and what I like to do is divide it into sections. So I'll start right where I uh, began at the bottom. And I'm really going to let the heat soak into this bead. Letting the flame do as much work as possible. That just makes it easier for me. Sometimes you can do more harm than good with the paddle if you're aggressively um, paddling that glass, especially if you do it with um, an opaque color. This is transparent, so it's not as easy to do that. But still, if you let the flame do a lot of the work for you, the glass will redistribute itself around the bead and make it easier for you. Again, slowing down when I want it to get hot. I'm constantly turning my flame up or down depending on what I'm doing. I remember when I first started, I didn't want to touch it. I was like, I have a neutral flame. I'm not going to turn it up or down. But it really is important to do that, especially when you're doing the decorative work. Because if you've got a really hot flame and you're doing decorations, it's going to be a lot harder for you to control. also important to have a neutral flame. You don't want too much oxygen or too much propane. Notice where I'm angling the flame also. I'm shooting on the bead, not on the mandrel. You don't want to overheat that mandrel or you, you could weaken it. So I'm giving a good overall heat on that bead. So as you guys know, palladium likes a hot bead. So when I'm ready to put that palladium on there, I want to make sure that it's really warm. I'm still shaping right now, but I'm just giving you a heads up. Put a little lip wrap on this vessel. This is black. I'm 
angling it down. I want the glass to flow down a bit. I like to come in with a pick or a knife and kind of redefine that space. I'm just adding a little more glass. When I come in with the paddle, I'm not aggressively pushing it. I'm just holding it there as a guide. And I'm going to make it even larger. angling my hand down so the glass flows in the direction that I'm holding it. So now we're going to put some palladium on this bead. So I like to keep it in the book. I'm going to use the end of my mandrel and just rip it out like that. Then I'm going to grab my tweezers. and we're gonna get it nice and hot. If the palladium is not hot, if the bead is not hot, the palladium won't stick. And you don't wanna overlap the palladium as well. If you get the palladium on top of itself, it'll stick. And then when you go to put a flower on there, it'll pull off. So it's important that you just have a single layer of the palladium. So I'll use the side of the tweezers or a paddle to marble that down. Palladium loves the heat, so you can really get in there and aggressively heat that palladium. And then we're going to come in with the gold. With the gold, I don't want to use the end of my mandrel. I just get the tweezers and go right in there. It's really important that the, um, the way that you do it too, you don't want to put the palladium on first because look how much heat I'm giving this. If I did this with the gold, I would completely burn it up and uh, you don't want to do that. So the palladium or the gold can go right on top of the palladium. I'll grab it, move it around. Come in with the paddle. There is no bad interactions, yeah. 
And then you want to be delicate. You just want to go in and not take too much time or you'll burn out that gold. I can turn down my flame at this point also. So now we're going to come in and do some flower decorations. I also have some cane that I did earlier that we can use as well, just to give it a little more, more decoration. So let's start with this one. This is the one that I drew up on the board. This is the white. So you want to get it hot, you want to touch down, and you want to pull away. So it's heat, touch, pull. Heat, touch, pull. Using a flame as a cutting tool. I come in afterwards also and elongate those points. Some people will use tweezers. I like using the, the glass itself. That gives me, I think, a more delicate point. So I'm going to make one on the other side. Same process. And it's like painting with molten glass. So what I, I'm doing is the minute I come to that bead, I already know what I'm doing. So I want to do a nice, long swipe. I never want to forget about the bead. You don't want the top to pop off or the bottom, bottom to pop off. So that's why I, I need to take my time and make sure that everything is well adhered. So this white works really nicely because it's got that soft, those um, stripes on it, so it'll, it's soft and so it really wants to stretch nicely. Also, I don't know if you can tell or not, but you get a nice divot down the middle and that's because I'm going uh, quickly. So it'll give it a nice little crease in the center of that. Uh, yes, my favorite flower um, is an iris. Um, I was inspired, my father used to take me to uh, the Japanese tea gardens. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and he would take me there as a child and so we would go over and be surrounded by all this beauty and they had the beautiful um, Japanese irises that came up in the spring and um, so yeah, I've been when I first started making beads, I actually made all different kinds of beads. I made striped beads and dot beads and everything, but I really wanted to make the flowers. And when I, when I went to that first gathering in Prescott, Arizona, I noticed that people were specializing in what they wanted to do. So they had the dots or the feathers, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to specialize in flowers. So that's, that's how I got my start. So I'm going to make the little berries, so I'm going to gather them up. Another cool story is when um, we moved, I live in Ashland, Oregon now, and when we moved there, I moved there in the fall, and our neighbor said, oh, wait till spring comes, you're going to be really surprised, because the backyard was huge, but it was, you know, it was winter, so it was snowy. And, kind of bleak looking. And in the spring, 
amazing, beautiful irises in the backyard. I was like, oh, look at this, it's wonderful. So it was really cool, that was a nice treat. I also like to go on lots of nature walks too. So I'm inspired by the, the wildflowers that I see. So do you see how I'm piling up those dots? Um, probably about three. I'm just looking to make sure I don't have any gaps. So I really pile them up there. These are like little, uh, maybe a, a lullaby. So now I'm going to jump to another part of the bead. So the first thing I want to do is establish my base. So I'll do my initial layer of dots, and then you have to go to the rest of the bead. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself a lot, but I'm just doing it so it'll sink into your head, and so you won't have a problem with anything cracking. I know it's hard in the beginning because you get so excited. You're like, it's working, it's working, and the next thing you know, crack. <laughs> so you just you don't want that to happen. Um, notice how I'm keeping that bead out of the flame too. If I were in the flame, I would be burning this gold off and you don't want to do that. So once you start to get the flowers on there too, it really helps because it establishes um, a nice surface there. So when the flame comes, it's going to be hitting that, the raised surfaces rather than that underneath part of the bead. So periodically I'll stop and just make sure that the whole bead is warm enough before I continue on. You can see in parts that the gold is starting to crackle. It gives it a really beautiful quality. So establishing that base, filling in the dots, and then piling the dots on top. You can also jump around from one to the other. Now that we've got some on there, you can continue to add those little berry dots on there, the little cells. So we can also add this is the cane that we made yesterday. We can also add a few little flowers going the opposite way, just to show you that again. So that's heat, touch, pull, and feathering into the flame, into the middle of the flower to give that little five petal flower. I think this is just gonna give it a little more interest, so we're changing it up just a little. That's the palladium. Wow. Yeah, the palladium, that's why it loves the heat. It'll turn purple and blue 
and green. I'm going to show you a bead at the very end and show you what happens. When I make a bead with palladium, I'll purposely put it right underneath one of the elements and make sure that I give it a lot of heat. So I'll add one more of these little purple flowers in here. This is a little wild flower. When I'm going down with that petal, you want to make sure you push to get a nice rounded petal. You don't want to just go in and pull right away. You want to heat, touch, push, and then pull to the center. And we'll do some nice little yellow dots in the center of that. So before I start to add any vine or leaf cane, I want to make sure that I get a nice even heat on this whole bead. So this is a leaf cane that we made earlier. So heat, touch, pull, that's the top of those berries. So I'm heating just as much glass as I need. That's a mistake that some people make sometimes is they heat too much glass. If you come down to the bead and you have a large ball of glass and then you go to feather it, well, it'll make a, a large dot. And I'm just heating what I need. So just a teeny bit, just enough to give me a couple little leaves there. So again, before I start, I want to get a nice heat on the whole piece. So now I'm adding the vines. When you're adding the vines, you want to go right on the edge of the flame, just enough to get it to move. So you want to heat the tip, come down, and just right on the edge of the flame. Heat up the whole bead. And don't be afraid to use your gold. I've seen people who have had books of gold for years. You know, take it out and start playing with it. It gives a really beautiful look to your beads. So you want to get it hot, touch it down, right on the edge. So now we want to have some little leaves coming off of that. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make the stem, so I'm going to heat it up and just draw the lines. Then I'll do some little leaves. So I want to get it hot, touch it down, pull it out. And when you're making leaves or a petal, you want to think about what you're doing ahead of time. So you've got that hot glass, you want to come down and you immediately want to pull it. You don't want to think, okay, I'm ready to go. Well, maybe I'm not. And then by then it's too late, your glass is cooled. So it's one fluid continuous motion. So you want to get it hot, you want to touch it down, and then you want to pull it. So we have a little room, so let's do more vines. Do you always keep your vines the same color, or do you use multiple colors? 
I use multiple colors, yeah. Just for the purpose of this demo, I just pulled the one, but when I, a lot of times I'll spend days just making component parts, so I'll just sit there and pull all different cane colors. Um, a lot of times I'll go out and I will pick flowers or I'll have books in front of me or I'll pin, print um, pictures from the internet and study. I'll pull the cane, hold it up to it. If it's not quite right, I'll pull it again. So I've got jars all surrounding my whole studio just filled with canes so then I can match it up. Sometimes I'll make a formula and forget the formula, do it all over again. But that's, I love making cane. That's part of the fun for me, so. So you get it hot, touch it down, loop it around. So the final thing that I will do is I will go through, and because we've been working with the heat, is I want to make sure that those berries are on there and that there's no little gaps. So this is one, I'll turn down my flame just a little, and I will come in and look for any gaps. This is where I want to make sure that those berries are nice and rounded. Again, not forgetting the whole bead. Before I add, I'm going to try and add just a few more vines and a few more leaves, but before I do that again, I want to heat up the whole bead. So when I'm doing this, I'm not in the hottest part of the flame, I'm up just a little bit. So it's kind of in between, this is the annealing flame, this is the hot part of the flame, that's a flame where you don't want to work at all. So here, it, this is the hottest part, I'm just up from it just a little bit, and this is going to help, because I'm doing all this spot heating, this is going to help give um, my bead a nice all-around heat so I don't have to worry about things flying off or um, my bead cracking. So this is an important step and I'll do this before I put it in the kiln as well. I can do a few leaves just coming right off those vines. So I'm balling it up, touching it down. I'm just doing the leaves right off of, of those little purple flowers. The tricky part and the question I get from lots of my students is how do you continue to add stuff without melting everything else in? So what I'm doing is I get a good overall heat and then I'm spot heating. So I'm not, I don't have my whole bead in the flame. Notice where my bead's at, it's below the flame. And 
And again, I'll use my tweezers to tap down any bit that's lifting up. When I work at home, I make some days I'll just make cane all day long. That's the fun part for me. Well, making the beads, of course, too, but I love doing the cane work. I'm running out of room. <laughs> what are your favorite colors of cane today? Uh, purples and pinks. Always a favorite for me. I can also have vines coming from this white flower as well. So I would start in and then go over like that. And again, I don't have to worry about the gold because it's all protected. because I've got all this surface decoration on there. Give it a nice heat. Uh, just a few more touches to those berries. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> no? <laughs> the berries have a lot of nice texture. They do, huh? Yeah. If you're going to make like grapes, you would basically do the same thing, just in a different... Exactly, yeah, in different colors. And larger balls, too. Yeah, because the cells on the, these berries are little, Grapes, you've got nice, large, yeah. So would well, you gather up a little bit more left before I would, down, well, I'd make it about this, more? I'd make it about this same thickness, but you kind of push in okay. and you make a different shape. We're going to be do, we'll do grapes tomorrow, the next day. I'll show you. We'll work on that. Did you make the necklace you're wearing? I did. <laughs> nice. My husband set the gemstones in it. Um, Derek Lusk, he's a, a miner and a gemologist, and uh, so he did that work for me. So he facets the top of my beads and he insets gemstones into my beads. Oh yeah, um, ergonomic accessories, they're okay. located in Canada. They um, used to be in Arizona, but they're in Canada now. And I cover them with this cloth just so they don't, won't get burned, but they're squishy and they just lift right onto the table. They're, they're great. 
And that makes a big difference. So you can see when I work, how I'm just right in this space. If, um, if I don't have that, I was getting pain shooting down my neck and arms, so it, it helps to have that so I can focus. Some people have the ones that come out for their wrists and hands, and that works well also. So I'm just making sure that everything's warm, nothing's gonna fall off. I'm flame polishing it, yeah. It gives it a good gloss to the bead. So, I think we are ready to go. You guys want to get a look at it before I put it in the kiln? So what I'd like to do is I want to show you, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and open it. That'd be great. Thank you so much. I want to show you what that palladium looks like. There we go. So can you see that? And if you guys want to come in and look, do you see the purpley, bluish cast that it gets when you work with it in a hot flame? That's a, that, that's a perfect example, yeah, right in there. Ready? Ready? <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> I know.